Are Democrats radicalizing left-wing terrorists? Mr. Reagan. By now, you've all heard about the tragic shooting at the Covenant School in Nashville, Tennessee. The shooter was a transgender, well, what the left would call a transgender man, and what conservatives would call a mentally ill woman. Her name was Audrey Hale. But that was really weird. I mean, I, I don't remember ever hearing about a female mass shooter. And so immediately I started thinking about like, what is the motivation here? What, why the heck would this person do this? And I actually wrote my buddy Kurt about this uh, shooting. I wrote, um, a 28 year old woman killed three kids. Why kids? This is bizarre. And then I wrote, maybe it's a trans dude. That would make way more sense. When I wrote that, I was thinking maybe it was a male that was pretending to be a female. Turns out it was a female pretending to be male. But even though I got that part wrong, the fact that I thought it was a trans person was right. And here's the thing. I actually believe that we can expect more of this because trans activists, trans extremism in America is incredibly dangerous. I, I've noted on my show before multiple times that the most vitriolic, vicious and destructive people that I have encountered on Twitter are trans activists. I've even been attacked personally online. People have gone into my various accounts and try to do whatever they can to try to disrupt my online presence or whatever, who are trans activists. I made a video a while back detailing death threats that I'd gotten from transgender folks. And they're just nasty, right? They're just vicious. And this is all due to a culture that has been cultivated by the left and by the LGBTQ community. And the Democrats have been facilitating this for years. They want to be on the side of the trans activists. They want to be on the side of transgender Americans. They want to be on the side of transgenderism generally. And until this shooting, I've always considered the Democrat messaging on this subject to be motivated primarily by votes, by power, by money, as everything on the left is, really. And the possibility that some people in the transgender movement might be dangerously radicalized. Well, I just figured that that was a predictable and not unacceptable side effect of dividing the country and securing an entirely new block of reliable Democrat voters. But now I think that it's a lot more sinister than this. I, I actually think that a lot of Democrats know that they're radicalizing extremists. And I actually think that for some of them, this is the goal. All right. Now, I know it's probably in bad taste to put an ad in this video, but I do need to pay the bills. And so I'm going to do it anyway. And in my defense, if anybody out there watching needs the services offered, it's actually not that annoying. In fact, it's helpful. But for everybody else, yeah, it's, it's annoying. Everybody has to invest in gold. I think that is obvious by now. Noble Gold Investments have made it their mission to stay on top of the most important economic news. Three bank runs in less than a week. Now, these are the second largest and third largest runs in history. The government is taking steps to guarantee all deposits. That means more money printing. Plus, the Fed is sitting on unrealized losses of about $1.2 trillion on their $8.3 trillion bond portfolio. And the Fed will continue to raise interest rates even if they tank the economy. Do you know who the only people are out there right now who are not afraid? The one who invested in gold with Noble Gold Investments. Gold is the most stable asset outside of any government control. Thousands have approached Noble Gold Investments to get their hands on gold. Hurry and go to noblegoldinvestments.com to secure your wealth now and get a free five ounce America the Beautiful coin with each gold or silver IRA if you qualify. Noblegoldinvestments.com, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. All right, so the shooter at this school, this, this unbelievable tragedy that we saw play out the other day, the shooter was a transgender what the left would call a transgender man, what conservatives would call a mentally ill woman. But this is not just a mentally ill woman. I am going to guess this was a woman that was taking testosterone. Now, I don't know that for sure, but that is the primary drug that women take who want to transition into becoming men or want to pretend that they're men and, you know, want to have some of the physical characteristics of men. They will take testosterone. And one of the known side effects of supplementing your normal testosterone with added artificial levels of testosterone is something called roid rage. And everybody knows about this, right? This is something that is a problem with the bodybuilding community. You take testosterone in order to build big muscles and you get roid rage. This is a huge problem. This is a problem with athletes, uh, football players, stuff like that. And it's also a problem with trans men or women who are trying to transition to, to try to pretend that they're men. And this is not something that's talked about all that much. I even looked it up. I actually looked up a study 
that was specifically about this to see if people understood, like people in the medical community understood that this was in fact a side effect of testosterone treatment trying to create men out of women. And I found a study, it was called, Does Testosterone Treatment Increase Anger Expression in a Population of Transgender Men? And this the study's conclusion was, this study demonstrates that during seven months of continuous gender-affirming hormonal treatment, anger expression and anger arousal control increased in trans men. And so, yeah, so this is something that we know happens, right? If you give women testosterone, they can have roid rage. They can have this problem, these anger issues. Um, And you're dealing with people here who are mentally ill, right? You're giving a mentally ill person testosterone, which is going to increase their anger. Like, what, what are you doing? It's almost like you're creating super soldier terrorists. There's no way that I can just pretend that I think that the medical community is completely innocent here, all right? You're complicit. If you know that you're dealing with mentally ill people and you're giving them drugs that are going to make them more angry and aggressive and depressed and all this stuff, what are you thinking? This is medical malpractice. So yeah, so I'm pissed at the medical community for not coming out against transgenderism. Absolutely, totally, strongly against transgenderism. But the Democrat Party, They are the most complicit. They are the worst because they have actually facilitated and exacerbated the mental illness of transgender Americans for years now, for years. They've decided this is something, this is going to be an issue that we're going to back. And why? Why do they do this? Because they want to divide the country. They want to say, you guys are victims and these are the enemy. You've got to rely on us to protect you from all the evil anti-trans people out there. So you're a victim. These people are evil primarily Republicans, Christians, white people, and we're going to protect you from them. So vote Democrat, vote Democrat, vote Democrat, right? That's their, that's what they do. We've known for a very long time that mental illness in this country is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. You see it, you see, you see it all over. And the reason is because instead of treating mental illness, we are told to affirm mental illness. You have to affirm the stated gender of a mentally ill person. And if you don't, you're a bigot. But it's worse than being a bigot because we're told that we're causing a trans genocide. And this is something that I just I covered literally in the last video that I posted. Democrats promote this idea of the trans genocide. And this casts conservative Christians as the villains because we refuse to affirm the delusion of transgenderism. We are the prison guards of a trans holocaust. And so, look, naturally, this nonsense is going to radicalize gullible Americans who become convinced that this genocide is real. Look, Democrats only have one message that gets them voters. Republicans are evil. Now, it used to be this is how we save the environment. This is how we protect vulnerable people. This is how we help victims. And Democrats still claim that these are their goals. But instead of helping black Americans who they claim are the victims of systemic racism, they instead say, this is how we take down the evil white males. It's no longer about protection or help. It's about destruction. Instead of protecting the environment, they now say, this is how we destroy the fossil fuel industry. And instead of doing things that might actually protect LGBTQ plus people in America, whom they claim are vulnerable. No, no. They say that anybody who used the wrong gender pronoun, they're the enemy. And people who don't use the right gender pronoun, they are committing trans genocide. And I actually explained this in my last video, trans genocide, but I will recap the concept of trans genocide here. The twisted logic works like this. Transgender Americans commit self-deletion at a very high rate. And I have to say self-deletion because I've heard that YouTube will suppress my video if I use the word that rhymes with brewicide, aka death by coffee. And as I said in my last video, I may actually be at risk of that. Anyway, because transgender folks are at such a high risk of self-deletion, we've got to try to protect them. That's the that's what the Democrats think, right? Never mind the fact that there's lots of professions with very high suicide rate. And, you know, if you don't support minors, uh, does that mean that we're causing the genocide of people in the mining industry? But I digress. Democrats say that, you know, because transgender folks are such high risk of self-deletion, we've got to try to protect them. And according to the trans activists, the only way to do that is to facilitate their delusion. So anybody who does not participate in affirming the fantasies of these mentally ill people, well, according to the activists, we are knowingly and intentionally encouraging them to self-delete. If I refer to a chick who is pretending to be a dude, if I refer to her as she, well, according to the activists, I'm intentionally encouraging that chick to self-delete. 
This is absurd. Now, I referenced in my last video a study by the Heritage Foundation, a guy named Jay Green conducted this study, called Puberty Blockers, Cross-Sex Hormones, and Youth Brewicide. You know, rhymes with brewicide. And this study indicates that the activists are just dead wrong. Affirmation may not be the best way to ameliorate the increased likelihood of self-deletion amongst transgender individuals. And conservatives have, since transgenderism became an issue, we have believed that rejecting the delusional gender fantasies of transgender folks is actually a much better direction. And I can't express just how strongly I personally believe this. Now, I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist, anything like that. But it's just common sense. If somebody entertains a serious delusion about themselves, they're not functioning in reality. And if you don't function in reality, there's a real danger of sinking deeper and deeper into your fantasy. And eventually you could become incapable of dealing with the real world. A child who thinks, maybe I can fly. They are snapped back into reality when they jump off their roof and they break their leg. We would all love to be able to bend and break steel with our bare hands like a superhero. But play around with a vice or a crowbar or a saw in your dad's garage as a kid and you quickly realize that the steel wins. Learning to function within the real parameters of the world in which we live, that is the most fundamental education that you can have as a child. Somehow we are neglecting to teach the most basic lessons to many children in the 21st century. And by supporting things like drag queen story hour, individual gender pronouns and the infinite myriad of genders that the LGBTQ plus activists pretend exist, Democrats are actually encouraging this. And as I said at the beginning of the video, until this point, I've always considered that Democrat messaging on this issue is entirely motivated by votes and power and money, as everything that the Democrats do is. But now I think that a lot of Democrats are intentionally radicalizing extreme left-wing trans activists, and they're hoping that these people become domestic terrorists. Now, why do I think that? I mean, it sounds pretty crazy, but why do I think that? You know, there, there's this expression you know what a Democrat is doing by listening to what they're accusing Republicans of. And what have the Democrats been accusing us all of for the past few years? Extremism, radicalization. They call us extreme MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. And as I said before, you know exactly what Democrats are doing just by listening to what they're accusing us of. And look, I know that that is not the most convincing evidence in the world, but I do think that that pattern is noteworthy. Here's a much more compelling argument. You don't really have a lot of domestic terrorism coming from the right. You don't have a lot of violence coming from the right. You don't have a lot of rioting coming from the right. On the left, you've got Antifa and you've got BLM. These are two organizations. People say, oh, Antifa is not an organization. It's just an idea. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not malicious. Antifa is very much an organization. And what does this leftist organization do? They burn down buildings. They attack people. They attack the police. They tear down statues. They ruin cities. What does BLM do? Exactly the same thing. They burn down buildings. They tear down statues. They attack people in the streets. They loot stores, stealing everything inside. Now, why do they do that? Why do they do that? It seems to have slowed up since Joe Biden has taken office. There doesn't seem to be as many Antifa riots. There doesn't seem to be as many BLM riots. Curious that. And it leads me to ask the question, what is the intention and what is the motivation of those who support Antifa and BLM? and who encourage these organizations to go out and riot. Well, there are multiple motivations, but I think that one of the more primary motivations is Marxism. Marxism has always maintained that the best way to bring about Marxism in a new country is to tear down the existing system, whatever that might be. In our case, it is a constitutional republic, but many people call this a democracy. I don't have a problem with that. I know a lot of conservatives go insane when they hear democracy. It's called common language, folks. It's called colloquialism. Just it's OK. It, just because somebody says democracy, it doesn't mean they're the devil. But anyway, the, the idea of Marxism and this comes from the old Soviet organization, the Com Intern, right? They used to have this thing called Com Intern, Communist International, Communism International, whatever. And the concept was, how do we spread communism around the world? And the idea was that you've got to create class warfare within every country. you got to reduce the quality of life in that country. And then the lower classes, which are the majority population, will 
take out the elites. They'll take out the upper class, the higher classes, and then the whole country will be basically destroyed. And then they will there will be a demand from socialism. Socialism will rise up in the ashes of the the obliterated former system. And not everybody agrees with this, but this may be the motivation of the billionaire Porge Poros. Uh, I can't say his name on the channel, or I think that they will probably suppress this this video. But uh, yeah, the billionaire Porch Poros, you can figure out who that is, uh, has pumped millions and millions of dollars into the campaigns of local prosecutors. Now, why would he do that? Well, he wants to bring in prosecutors who will not prosecute certain crimes, who will release certain prisoners from jail. Uh, so a lot of these murders that are happening in America, a lot of the increase in crime in America is occurring because you got these prosecutors that have come in and they've just not prosecuted. They've just released prisoners. They've allowed a lot of these dangerous criminals out into society. And this is the goal of Porge Poros. Now, why does he want to do that? Again, there is this theory that if you can create enough pain, enough suffering in a society, you can reduce the quality of life enough, then people will demand socialism. Uh, but look, there, there, there may be a different motivation, right? There may be that a lot of people on the left, they may not want socialism full on. They may just want Democrats to be in power in America, because as we all know, as anybody who watches the show knows, Democrats that are in power today are entirely corrupt. We might as well be in a socialist country if Democrats are in control in Washington, D.C. They have a racket, right? They can use tax dollars. They can use their power of creating laws or dismissing laws in order to game the system in order to get rich or to funnel money to organizations that are friendly to them that'll help them get reelected. They care about power and they care about money. That's all Democrats care about, Democrat politicians. And so why would you have, if you wanted the Democrats to be in control, why would you have BLM and Antifa tearing up the cities? Well, it's sort of like a protection racket, right? In the old days, you would have like the Italian mafia. They might come into your business and they might say, ah, you know, it'd be a shame if this business got burned to the ground. It's like, you know, if you give us like uh, $5,000 a month, we could maybe stop anybody who might want to burn down your building, you know? But the idea is obviously, if you don't give them 5,000 bucks, they're going to burn down your building. They're going to burn down your business. And that kind of feels like what's going on with Antifa and BLM. Look, guys, uh, if you don't vote Democrat, BLM and Antifa might just burn down your building. They might just terrorize your city. But when we're talking about getting votes, this is no longer a protection racket. This becomes terrorism. You have to vote the way we want or your city is going to be terrorized. Your city is going to be burned to the ground. I actually talk about this in a recent video that I did for my Mr. Pagan channel. This is actually the first time I brought this idea up. Do you really want us to live in a world in which Trump is elected? In which all of the hardworking deep state swamp dwellers are arrested or kicked out of D.C. and there's no corrupt political machine funneling money to the various deep state operatives and establishment politicians and their Wall Street cronies and the military industrial complex, a world in which Democrat politicians are not taking bribes and kickbacks. Oh, sure, you might say you want that, but that's also the same world in which Antifa and BLM are burning down the businesses of straight white men. Remember? Remember when Trump was president? Remember all the riots and the destruction? That can happen again, you ungrateful pricks. I mean, I, I don't know why that stuff happens when Trump's in office. It's certainly not some kind of protection racket. All I'm saying is that if you vote for Biden in 2024, that won't happen. So yeah, this may just be a state-run protection racket by Democrats, a.k.a. domestic terrorism. There's another motivation that I considered, and that is just that some people are pure evil. That's it. They're just evil. Uh, and if you don't believe in evil, let me tell you a story about evil. Okay. I met this gay guy once. This is in New York City. You know, eventually I figured out he was gay, and, and I had the opportunity to ask this guy, why are you gay? And he had a bizarre answer. His answer was that he was just turned on by what he described as, this is his word, things that were naughty. <laughs> And the way he described it, as I continue to ask him questions about this, essentially the idea was this. Anything that was forbidden by society, anything that was deemed bad or evil or wrong, he liked that stuff. He was drawn to that stuff. And so he looked at temptation to do something wrong, not as something to be avoided or as a challenge to his morality or to being a good person. He looked at it as something to be indulged, right? Now, 
some people might be able, like some psychiatrists might be able to say, oh, I can, uh, I can explain why that is in, you know, in, in psychiatry or in psychology or whatever. But I think for most people, we just look at that and then we say, that's just pure evil. That's just evil. And there's another category of people that I've met who just want to hurt others. That's it. Right. Uh, I had a buddy. This is a guy I knew in college and he always wore T-shirts that were very anti-Christian, like intentionally anti-Christian. He was a strong atheist and he hated Christianity, hated Christians. And these were very provocative shirts. And I would give him crap for them sometimes in class, you know. And uh, what I found out is that he was actually very funny and very intelligent. And he also noticed that I was very funny and I was very intelligent. And before we knew it, we were good friends, bizarrely. And this guy was obviously a strong Democrat and I was a strong Republican. And he knew that I was a strong conservative Christian um, and I knew that he was a strong Democrat atheist and that didn't stop us from being friends. On my end, part of it was obviously I thought maybe I could fix this guy. Maybe I could help him. Maybe I could reach him somehow. Um, but after a while, I, I eventually asked him, I was like, why do you vote Democrat? You're obviously a very intelligent guy. Um, and by then I had figured out that he knew that most politicians were evil, you know, were just bad and were going to destroy the country. I said, why, why do you vote Democrat when you know they're bad for the country? And his answer was fascinating. And a lot of people, by the way, I've, I've written about this stuff on Twitter and a lot of people will say, you know, oh, this never happened. You know, of all the things that never happened, this never happened the most. You know, that was popular to say for a while. People would always put that on my on, on these kind of posts. But I, I promise you, these are real people that I have met. And these are real encounters. And I'm telling the, you these stories as honestly as I can remember to tell them. So so this guy responds to me, says, uh, the reason that I vote Democrat is because I I want to destroy the country. That's what he said. Now, you got to understand, this guy was a very ugly guy. Like physically, he was very ugly. He was actually difficult to look at. He was so just unfortunate looking, as a girl I knew once used to say. Um, he felt that he had been dealt a bad hand in life, that God or nature or whatever it was that made him ugly basically screwed him over. And he was never going to be able to enjoy life in the same way that attractive people did. So anything that attractive people liked or what he perceived was designed for more attractive people like mainstream society he just rebelled against he just hated it christianity he hated he just considered these things to be for the pretty people and not for him and so his idea was if i can't be happy no one should be i should drag people down to live in the misery that is my life he had no interest in elevating society he wanted to destroy society he wanted to make people as miserable as he was it was kind of a revenge on society because he was born he felt you know like a kind of victim and this is how many victims feel they have this resentment for everybody else and they want to tear everyone else down because they feel that they have been treated unfairly and so what happens when the democrats keep telling everyone you're a victim you're a victim you're a victim they're creating more and more people that resent society resent people that they feel are have a better life than they do and this resentment causes people to lash out and want vengeance, want revenge, even though they're not really victims. And even though they can actually have a good life, they don't care about that. They want to tear you down. So look, there are evil people in this world. That's just a real thing. The left would like you to believe that there are no evil people, that everybody, oh, except for white people and men, uh, everybody else is just purely good. And we just have to accept them for who they are. And what they mean by that is, of course, anybody who votes Democrat. Everybody who votes Democrat is perfectly good. <laughs> but anyway, so the point I'm trying to make here is that there are many intentions, many motivations on the left to want to create violence in America. And so I really do believe that Democrats either know that they are incidentally creating domestic terrorists or they are intentionally creating domestic terrorists. And look, we cannot negotiate with terrorists. Democrats must be defeated at the polls, they must be defeated in the media, and they must be defeated in the culture. Do not back down. Do not appease them. Do not entertain their delusions. Conservatives must fight for the traditional values that created this country. Because if we lose this culture war, evil wins. And we will see more and more horrors like the tragic shooting at the Covenant School in Nashville. Well, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they're trying to destroy the country. <laughs> Good night. What is fascism? Fascism is private ownership, private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. 
Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative so-called is the one that says, less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny.